For over 200 years, the spirituality of, of the brothers, of those that live here, us Franciscans, has always been an outreach to, to all people. The idea being that is everybody is precious in the eyes of God. And so we've always had this, this openness. We've always had this outreach. We've always had this hospitality. This is one reason you see the doors wide open. It's a welcoming gesture. And so it's a place for, for people to come. Bold Mission San Luis Rey is considered sacred ground. Now, the doors are always open. The church is always cool. You can walk in the gardens. Our cemetery is open to anyone of, of good faith. And the mission serves the people, particularly in their sacramental needs. People come here for weddings, funerals, to be baptized. And so this is kind of the, the long Franciscan tradition of simply feeling available to people. And so I and all the people, the staff, the gardeners, everybody here are in a long line of people going back over 200 years that have worked to uh, protect this mission, to serve it, to take care of it. And over the centuries, we do what we can to, to preserve and to pass on to the next generation what was here before us. It's a great honor to be part of that tradition, a great honor. And this is why it's so important that the church is open. This is why it's so important that the church be saved. It would just be inconceivable to have the North County with a closed mission. The most pressing problem that the mission has today is that the state has given a mandate that all buildings have to be brought up to code. By state law, legally, the mission has to be retrofitted. Many buildings on this whole complex have to be retrofitted, but the most important one and the most historical one and the most valuable one is the church. This was originally the mortuary chapel where they would bring the deceased after they had died. It's now a chapel dedicated to the Blessed Mother. It's got serious problems with the walls and the structure. You can see up here in the top where moisture has come up either from the ground or down from the roof, which is causing the adobe to expand and the plaster to fall. So the idea is to put steel bands around in the roof and metal rods down through the walls and it would stabilize and protect the church. In, in 2003, there was a major earthquake in, in San Miguel and it was so intense that it seriously damaged the church where it was just very unsafe to go in. And so the church it was actually chained off by a fence and locked for a number of years. So the, the point of the retrofitting is, is to make the place safe. This is really just adobe. This is dirt blocks stacked on top of each other. And so of course, it's, it, in a major earthquake, it would crumble immediately. The mission represents far more than a church uh, or a historical landmark. It was the origin of activity in the San Luis Rey Valley so many years ago. And we'd like to see your family a part of helping to preserve this beautiful old mission for the next 200 years. The mission is independent from the Diocese of San Diego, so we don't receive any subsidy from the Roman Catholic Church. We don't receive any state funds. You know, the money we get from the gift shop, from the retreat house, from our little museum, helps keep the place open, helps us meet our bills. But to retrofit a major building like this is just really beyond the financial means of the six brothers that are here. We actually have some grants from foundations and particularly a grant from the National Park Service that is a matching grant. And if this is not matched and the work is not completed by the end of next year, 2012, we will lose that grant to actually fit the church because otherwise it closes. Where we are currently is that we need to raise about 45% more to get to the goal. If you would take a look at February, that's when we want to start construction. We have had a good response to our campaign. People have given generously. We need more people to do that in order to be successful. This is one of the most beautiful architectural wonders in California. And these doors may be closing if we don't get this retrofit underway. We're already halfway through our campaign. So whether you can give a small amount or a large amount, whatever you give in the name of your family, we hope you'll speak up now because tomorrow could be too late. We're planning to raise our funds through individuals giving a long-term pledge, which would be three to five years, corporations to help partner with us, and of course, special events. What we need to save this mission is people helping us out with contributions. 
And I know they're going to do that because they too want to save the mission San Luis Rey. You can say technically that the Franciscan Friars own this 56 acres. In a legal sense, this is true. But in the reality, it's owned by the people. And the Franciscans who work here are really trustees. And our job is to try to keep it open, keep it accessible. I mean, the building's huge, but in some ways, because of its size and its, and its history, it's very fragile. But God normally works through ordinary people like you and I. And so through people's generosity, through people's help, through people's support, it will become a reality. And I know this will happen. We're asking you to go to sandlessray.org, click on Donate, and make sure that your family is representing and helping to save this mission. Thank you for your support.